All right, Steeler fans, I had to record this earlier, so if someone tried to get in a question late, I'm sorry. Family stuff got in the way, and I had to record this podcast much earlier than I normally do, but we still had a lot of questions, so let's do this mailbag segment right. Let's go, Jeff Coons. Greetings from Not Mad Canada. Jeff, I'm delighted by all the punter talk of late, but all for the wrong reasons. Very sad to see Cam Johnston go down on Sunday. From everything I've seen and read, he was an impressive upgrade at an overlooked position. I hope Corliss, he says Corliss Williamson, it's Corliss Waitman, that's okay, uh, can step in quickly. He sounds like the best option among these who tried out. He knows the Steelers and Denver, which should help this week. How is success measured for him as he runs alongside a moving train? Less than Cam, better than Weasel Boy. Well, Weasel Boy and Presley Harvin are, are very low bars to clear, first and foremost, Jeff. Uh, but I think for Waitman, it's, you know, he's he has a pretty decent leg from what I recall. What I recall in terms of what exactly he was providing when he was with the Steelers had a big leg and it was a situation where he just did a great job, in my opinion, of moving train. Like you said, I want to see hang time. I want to see inside the 20, but more is probably withholding than anything. I want to see him be a good holder. You don't want to have Chris Boswell missing kicks for any reason. Let's go to Believers, the Ride or Die Crew Poll of the Week. What for you... What for you think? Well, what do you think was the most impressive on Sunday? The offensive line play, quarterback play on a short week, defensive domination, or Boz being Boz? I was tempted to say Boz being Boz, but I'm actually going to say is the offensive line play. I was super impressed with the offensive line play. I expect Chris Boswell to make a 57 yarder. He's done it a bunch, especially in a dome. I did not expect Spencer Anderson and Zach Frazier to have a great outing in their very first starts in the NFL. So that's what I went with. Afton Forehead, what are you hoping to see from Van Jefferson this week? Van Jefferson didn't play poorly last week. It was in the first drive, the Steelers offensive drive, where he was wide open and Justin Fields just missed him. I want to see better blocking, I'll tell you that. But for Van Jefferson, I just want to see him creating space. I want to see the quarterback looking his way. And then lastly, Afton says, how do you see them using Edmonds? Since they asked to go on the 53-man the roster, I see him actually playing a role. I actually see him. Maybe he's going to have to play special teams first and foremost, but I'm wondering if they're going to have a, a plan in place in terms of slot coverage type things, something that he's done in the past. We'll see. Thomas asked with Dan Moore, not being 100%. Do you see the Steelers moving Jones, the left tackle starting five Tanu at right today, Wednesday, the first injury report will come out. That's where I'll really be able to see this Dan Moore limited. If he's just limited. I, I don't think they make any moves. If he's not does not practice, then yeah, they're probably putting five Tanu at right and Broderick Jones at left. We'll see how it goes. I don't want to jump to conclusions. Let's go to Heath Davis. He asked several. El Jefe, I know this isn't NCAA football, but I think you start Russ this week because the defenses are comparable between Denver and Atlanta. You get a fair comparison barring any new injuries on offense. Might as well see what both can do. What are your thoughts? I agree with Mike Tomlin. If Russell Wilson isn't healthy, then what are we talking about? If Russell Wilson is still having a, a situation where he can go out on the field and have another setback, then what are we talking about? It doesn't make any sense. I'm not going there. If he's healthy, that's a different story. But as of right now, according to Mike Tomlin, he's not. So I, I got to disagree. Next, I think I saw the offense get better every drive in Atlanta. We saw Fields settle in, and we also saw our offensive coordinator make in-game adjustments. What steps forward would you like to see this week? Uh, I talked about that in the keys to victory. I want to see some creativity. I want to see better red zone production. And really, I just want to see them in the play calling, getting the quarterbacks settled in. Uh, Heath also asked, now that the NFL is tied to sports betting, it's hard to not think that these refs aren't being told to be more strict or just blatantly wrong in order to keep games close on purpose. Betting is fine. The NFL shouldn't profit, though. It's the same as the players gambling. I, Heath, you're not the first person that's brought up this conspiracy theory about the NFL and gambling and how they want to keep games close. I'm not saying that it's it's out of the realm of possibility, but I will say that I personally believe that some of these officials, the game is just too fast for them. It's just too fast, and I just don't know if there's an easy way to fix it. But that's not my job. That's not my pay grade. It's above my pay grade. Let's go to the final question from Heath. How many almost sacks does Miles Garrett have to get to be as good as TJ Watt? A lot. We'll put it that way. A lot. Let's go to Eric. Love the show, Jeff. My question is, who do you believe is an opponent this year the Steelers should beat but won't? 
That's tough. Uh, you know that there's teams like the Chargers, week three opponent at Acrisure Stadium. They had a they didn't look good last year at all. And it was Brandon Staley and Justin Herbert got injured. And so a lot of people look at last year's schedule and the results, and they think it's going to lead to what they can see in 2024. Not always the case. So for me, I look at this and say that the Chargers might be one of those teams where the Steelers fan base might say they're going to beat them, but if they lose, that that might be one of those situations. All right, let's go to Nathan Bolig. He said, if you're the head coach and health isn't a factor, who do you start in Denver? I've said it. If, if both were healthy, I think Russell Wilson is the quarterback that they would start. I don't disagree. I don't necessarily agree with that. I would like to see Justin Fields, but that's what they, the Steelers, would do. Next, in your opinion, is it too early to be concerned about wide receiver depth, or should we wait to see what it looks like with Roman Wilson back? I want to see what Roman Wilson can do. Uh, I, I was speaking to a Michigan fan the other day, and they said that you're going to love Roman Wilson. He's so great. Yeah, I, I bet he is. But at the same time, I, I just don't know what he can, what he brings. Like, what does he bring? So I'm going to wait. I'm going to hold judgment. Let's go to Lumberzak94. Since the Raiders look like dog water, what would you be willing to trade for Devontae Adams? Also, can we take a second to appreciate the cherry on top of week one? That was Baker balling out while Watson Watson looked unplayable in Cleveland. Browns will forever be the Browns. The Cleveland quarterback situation is the gift that keeps on giving. But since the Raiders, I'm not, that would require first round picks. Devontae Adams, not that I wouldn't want him, but it's the same with the IU crap that we just dealt with for the last two to three months. It just depends on what the Steelers would have to give up. Let's go to Mike Smith. Jeff, the story of how bad the officiating is has been going on for several seasons now. Can you remember a time when the officiating was adequate? If so, where did it all go wrong? Honestly, I'm having trouble recalling consistently good officiating. You're always going to have memories of officiating that's gone wrong. The Phil Luckett game in 94 where they're in Detroit Thanksgiving Day. Jerome Bettis called in the air. We remember those moments. We remember uh, Al Riveron, and we remember these names of you know Ed Hockley and Jesse James caught that ball. We remember those, but we, and, and I'll continue in, on this path in 2005, the divisional game, Indianapolis, Troy Palomalo's interception. He's getting up, he knocks the ball out and they actually rule it that it was a, not an interception, but there are a lot of times where they get the call right. And so I don't want to say that there was never a time that they got every call wrong. It's just, I don't want to go. I don't want to say that these guys are completely inept. They do get more calls right than they get wrong. It's just that the ones that they get wrong sometimes are blatant, and that's an issue. Brandon Colburn says, "Can we normalize the nickname Bullseye Boswell for the man, the myth, the legend, Chris Boswell?" I don't mind Bullseye Boswell, but for me, it's tough to dismiss Wizard of Boz. I don't know why everyone's just stuck to that, and he doesn't seem to hate it. I guess. Let's go to Mark Payne. If you knew the Steelers would not win another championship in your lifetime. Would you continue to watch and cover them with the same passion, follow them with less passion, pick a new team or quit watching the NFL altogether? They could still reach the Super Bowl, but not win. I got to be honest. That would be difficult. That would be a very challenging ask to say, Jeff, the Steelers are never going to win. That is a guarantee. They're never going to win the Super Bowl. Are you going to still watch? I would probably still watch, but I don't know if I would cover them with the passion that I have. That's a tough, that's a tough one. I, I, I honestly don't think I would. I would cover. I, I don't think I could cover the team. I might still watch them, but if you know that there's never going to win one, what are we watching for? I don't know. Maybe that's just me, and maybe it's just the way I'm feeling right now. All right, let's go to the Wanderer. He said Justin played well enough to get the start next week. Looks like he might, barring a a big recovery from Russell Wilson. And as we always do, let's finish it off with Steeler Fan sixty nine. He said I had to change my computer password today, so I typed incorrect. So whenever I forget what is the computer, what whenever I forget my password, the computer will say your password is incorrect. <laughs> That's funny. Next, my farmer friend used his government grant aid to buy baby chickens. He got the money for nothing and the chicks for free. If you don't know, that's dire straits right there, folks. All right, to everyone that contributed to the mailbag, I thank you very much. And in case you're wondering, how do I get my question answered on the mailbag? Find me on Twitter at Jay Hartman, H-A-R-T-M-A-N underscore P-I-T. I I will put out the question every Tuesday morning. All you have to do is reply to that, and I will answer your question live on the air. Again, apologize to all those people that that reached out that that wanted to know what's going on. 
and they missed because I had to record early. So my apologies. Be ready for next week. It'll be a normal week for me. But there you go. Make sure that you're on the lookout for all of our content on the Steel Curtain Network. Today at 11, we should have a Steel City Insider with Jim Wexel and Jeremy Ritz coming up. Uh, make sure you're checking out all of our content, live stream stuff, uh, tomorrow's Pittsburgh Standard Time, all of it. Don't miss a thing. And make sure you're checking out me on Friday where I'm going to have Behind Enemy Lines. All bets are off with Jeremy Jerome Betts. I'm going to give you my prediction for the game as well as a parlay. Can Jeff go two for two? We'll see. Make sure you check out our friends at DraftKings. Use that DraftKings Pick 6 app. Use the code CURTAIN. Save yourself some cash. Get an NFL a month of NFL Plus Premium on the house. You bet 5 bucks, you get $50 in free plays. Offer ends on the 19th of September. Again, the Pick 6 app via DraftKings. But that does it for me. You all know how we finish it out. Be safe. Be kind and God bless. Have a great rest of your week. We will see you on Friday. Go Steelers.